Hey everybody, it's Dan, and in this video we're going to finally look at the Meller attack, a line out of the Italian game that I've referenced a few times now. I wanted to make this video because the attack does have several sharp possibilities for white, as we'll see. But there is one fatal flaw in the attack. It has been quote-unquote solved. What that means is the best defense for black has been found, which results either in the attack being successfully parried or in a completely drawn position. Nevertheless, the average black player is probably going to be unaware of this particular line, and therein lies the appeal of this attack. There are several places where there is only one move that will prevent black from losing the game. One move that will successfully defend against all the threats white is going to bring to bear on the black king. And as you can imagine, it will be difficult to find that move, especially in a completely unknown position. So as I said, the Meller attack comes from the Italian game. I'm just going to flip through the opening moves here because we've covered this and all the different variations for both sides in my video on the Italian game, and we'll stop right here with the bishop hitting the check on b4. As I mentioned in my other video, white has two ways to defend, bishop to d2 and knight to c3. Knight to c3 is the move that is going to allow white to get into the Meller attack. After knight to c3, the best move for black in this position is knight captures on e4 attacking the pinned knight. White, however, is going to ignore that for a moment and simply castle. The best move for black here is going to be bishop captures c3, and black is probably expecting to recapture c captures d. However, white here is going to push d5 and attack black's knight. Capturing bc here is just going to allow black to play a tempo on the bishop with d5, and black is safely up a pawn and can continue with development, castling, or even knight captures c3 to go up another pawn. So that's why after the bishop captures on c3, d5 to attack the knight. And the better choice for black to play here is to save the bishop and pull it back to f6, which is going to allow black later to finish development, as well as hold on to the bishop pair. If black tries to save the knight and plays it to e7, we capture the bishop, black can castle, white can attack the knight with the rook, and the knight plays to d6 to blockade the pawn and attack the bishop, the bishop drops back, and white here just has a bit more of a versatile position. Black is going to have to expend a couple of moves to get the light square bishop involved, while white has space in the center. So that's why to go back to this position right here, it's better for the, uh, the bishop to simply pull back to f6. After this, white is going to play another sharp move, rook to e1. There's no reason to take the knight on c6 right away, instead white is going to reposition pieces to get ready for the attack first, especially given the uncastled position of the black king. Black is going to jump the knight to e7, and now white recaptures a piece with rook captures on e4. Black here needs to play d6 to stop the pawn from advancing any further and causing problems. White here can force the exchange of dark square bishops, after which black can finally castle. And now comes the move that really starts the attack. Knight captures on h7. But in this position right here, we can also see the essential flaw in the Meller attack. If you'd like to, pause the video and see if you can find the move for black that is going to stop the attack cold in its tracks. But I'm just going to show it to you right now. The move is simply bishop to b5. Now, in this position, black is basically going to force the position to simplify. And that is exactly what white does not want. If you're the attacking side in chess, you want to keep as many of your pieces on the board as possible to make the positions complicated and dynamic. Alternatively, if you're defending, simplifying is going to make your job a lot easier. In this position, really the best white can do is to play rook captures on e7, and then we have knight captures on f8 just to keep the material equal. But after the dust settles, where is white's attack? It's completely evaporated. So once again, this bishop to b5 move is the best parry of the Meller attack. It's resisting accepting the sacrifice in order to stop the attack. However, I feel like most players would not really think twice about accepting the sacrifice, and so they'll capture on h7. If black does play this move, now the attack is really going to kick in a high gear. First we have queen to h5 check, and after the king retreats, rook over to h4 with a mating threat. f5 gives the king room to run, white hits the check, Black runs to f7, and now a nice move, rook to h6, exploiting the pin on the pawn and stopping the king from possibly making use of the 6th rank. Now here, we're at a point where black has to choose the proper defense, and they might not always do so, given the seemingly passive threat that white has. 
That threat is to reroute the bishop via e2 to h5, and if allowed to get there, black is going to have quite the headache. For example, bishop to d7 here loses immediately to bishop e2, which actually leads to mate no matter how black plays it. Queen to e8 actually prolongs the mate the longest, but white here plays bishop to h5 check, black's only response is knight to g6, queen captures g6 check, and black plays the king to e7, queen to g5 check, and black again only has one legal move, uh, rook to f6, queen captures on g7 check, and if the queen blocks, white plays bishop captures f7, black recaptures with the rook, rook to e1 forces the king to d8, you have queen g8 check, rook block, queen check, bishop block, and then mate. Alternatively, if we go back to this position right here after the queen hits the check on uh, g7, if the rook blocks, that just leads to a quicker mate. Simply queen to g5 check. If king to f8, we have rook to h8 checkmate. And if in this position you have uh, rook to f6, then you have queen f6 checkmate. So after the queen captures on g7 here with the check, the only way to delay checkmate is with king to d8. Here you have bishop captures e8, bishop captures e8, queen captures f6 check, queen to e6 check, king back to d8, rook to e1, bishop d7, rook h8 check, and then you have the checkmate. So to go all the way back to this position here, that is the threat white has after rook to h6. If you'd like, pause the video and see if you can find the best defense for black. The next move is in fact the only way for black to assure a draw in this position, and that move is rook to g8 one of those moves that black might have a difficult time finding. Now, if black doesn't play either rook to g8 or the fatal bishop to d7, but something else, uh, for example, let's just make a move with pawn to a6, bishop e2 to h5 is still very good, but without the forced mate we just looked at, because now the king can preemptively move to e8 and make use of d7, whereas after bishop to d7 in that other line, the d7 square was no longer available for the king. Even so, the position is very tricky, and black is going to have to play extremely carefully and accurately. Rook to g8 here, however, is going to pretty much assure black the draw, provided they defend properly for just one or two more moves. So after rook to g8, white can generate another threat. Pause the video and see if you can find the move if you'd like, but I'm just going to show it to you now. White here plays rook to e1, and again black has to be very, very careful. The threat here is rook on e to e6. If black plays, for example, bishop to d7, we have rook on e to e6, and bishop captures e6 is forced. Otherwise, let's just make a nothing move like a6. You have a rook on h to f6, and that is going to lead to mate. So, uh, once again, in this position right here, bishop captures rook is forced. The pawn recaptures with check, and the king needs to play to e8 in order to avoid the checkmate. After that, uh, rook to g6 puts a lot of pressure on the black position with g7 falling, and the whole house is ready to fall after that. You'll note that in this position, if the knight captures g6, that just leads to mate on f7. So, in this position right here, after the rook plays to e1, uh, what is black's best defense? One more time, you can pause the video if you'd like to try to find the one move that will save black to draw. I'm going to show it to you now. That move is queen to f8. Now if rook on e to e6, bishop captures e6, the pawn recaptures with check, and then the black king is quite safe on e8. So after queen to f8 in this position right here, white can try one more time to catch black with bishop to b5, taking away the e8 square from the black king. But now black is finally in a position to force the draw. Rook to h8 forces the queen to capture, and once she does, the pin is broken and black captures white's rook. White can play queen h7 check, and black simply sidesteps to f7, I'm sorry, f6. Uh, note that in this position, queen to g7 to block the check is bad due to the tactic of deflection, and in this position, mate is going to be right around the corner. So, after the king sidesteps the check on f6, White captures the knight, uh, black recaptures, and then the best that white can do in this position is just going to be a draw by repetition. So, uh, that is the Meller attack. As I said in the beginning, it seems to have been solved for black, which is why you almost never see it in tournament and top play. 
However, in an online game, you might have really good chances as white to catch your opponent completely off guard if they go for the main line. Now, I'm not going to make a Grandmaster video for this attack since it's more of just a subset for the Italian game, but I do hope you enjoyed the video. Questions and comments are welcome, ratings are appreciated, and thanks for watching.